When was the last time you set sail on Sea of Thieves? In my case, it's been a little while since I've heard the sweet shanties of the sea. And I've got to tell you, I miss it. Hi, my name is Mystique, and in today's video, we'll explore how this game became my absolute favourite, the moments where it might have lost its way, and why, despite all of the challenges it's faced, it remains one of my all-time favourite games. Sea of Thieves is a game that holds a special place in my heart. It's a game that has brought me countless hours of joy and excitement. The sense of adventure and freedom to explore the high seas with my crew is something that I cherish deeply. So how did it become my favourite game? For me, it all started with the promise of boundless adventures and endless treasures. I was drawn to the idea of sailing with the open ocean, discovering hidden islands, battling skeletons and other players. The sense of unpredictability and the ability to forge your own narrative made Sea of Thieves stand out. But like any game, Sea of Thieves has had its fair share of ups and downs. It's not always been smooth sailing. We'll discuss the moments where it seemed to take a wrong turn and what those changes meant for the community, the delays in content updates, lack of significant new features and the toxicity that has tested the loyalty of its player base. So why does Sea of Thieves continue to hold a special place in my gaming heart? We'll explore that question as we journey through this tribute to Sea of Thieves. To understand why I love Sea of Thieves, we need to take a look back at its history. Released back in 2018 by Rare, a legendary game developer known for classics like Banjo-Kazooie and Goldeneye. Man, I love that game. I remember coming downstairs with my brothers all getting together to take turns playing it as it's all we had at the time. Anyway, the concept of Sea of Thieves was captivating. A shared world pirate adventure where you could sail with friends, dig up buried treasure and engage in epic ship battles. I vividly remember my early days with the game. I spent countless hours trying to be a perfectionist, unlocking all cosmetics, hunting down every commendation and becoming a pirate legend. One of the highlights during the early days was the golden era of Sea of Thieves. This was a time when players would gather to fight over skull forts, band together to summon the Megalodon during the Hunger in Deep event, and work together to try and uncover the secrets of Sea of Thieves. The sense of camaraderie was palpable, yet always left room for piracy to take place at any point, and it cemented my love for the game. The golden era of Sea of Thieves was marked by a series of fantastic updates that elevated the game to new heights. Some of the most memorable ones include The Hunger in Deep, Cursed Cruise, Forsaken Shores, Shrouded Spoils and the Anniversary Update. During this period, each update felt like a passionate labour of love from the developers. The new content was thoughtful, immersive and added layers of excitement to the game. Sea of Thieves was at its peak and the player base was ecstatic. These updates introduced grand adventures, mysterious threats, and countless new treasures for players to fight over and sell. It was a time when the community came together to explore the new content, sharing stories of their epic journeys on the high seas. The joy and excitement were through the roof. Unfortunately, the fairy tale of what I like to call named updates would soon come to an end. Sea of Thieves experienced a noticeable shift in direction and it coincided with the introduction of the seasonal content format. Since the launch of Season 1, Sea of Thieves seemed to focus more on delivering regular, smaller updates rather than taking its time to craft unique and expansive experiences. This shift then had repercussions in some of the content they had already released, such as Arena, which had built up its own cult following. The decision to close the Arena game mode left many players, including myself, disappointed. The game's identity became uncertain, leaving us to ponder the question, what is Sea of Thieves all about? This is a question that has become increasingly relevant. Sea of Thieves has always been about the tools not rules methodology, giving players the freedom to shape their own adventures. I've always cherished memories of simpler times where I could log on and set sail without a care in the world. The game was a place where I could be the pirate I wanted to be, free from the constraints of everyday life. 
But over the years, changes like the introduction of safer seas, also known as PVE servers, and the removal of certain mechanics have made it feel as though Rare is more focused on accommodating to new players rather than expanding the sandbox for veterans, and this has had an impact on the game's core identity. In recent times, I've experienced a sense of burnout within Sea of Thieves. The game's seasonal content model, which relies on a single headline feature to carry it for months on end, has left me longing for the days where every update felt engaging and kept us entertained for hours on end. I miss the times when headline features were met with enthusiasm and anticipation, not disappointment and frustration. Today, the community is plagued by constant bugs, issues, and a sense of negligence from the developers. Honestly, watching the Sea of Thieves community on Twitter from the sidelines makes me genuinely so sad because there is clearly issues across the board with hacking, hit reg, and server issues, and much, much more. But it feels like no one is taking charge and addressing their players and addressing the issues at hand. Because we can't get past these glaring issues, it seems that we as a community can't focus on talking about the possibility of different features and updates that could come to the game. I remember talking with my friends near the launch of the game and we always used to theorize and ask the question, wouldn't it be cool if we had this in game? Why don't they add this? Now the questions I see asked is, why don't Rare fix their game? It's absolutely exhausting to tell you the truth. Despite the challenges and burnout, there is a soft spot in my heart that keeps me coming back to Sea of Thieves. It's the music of the game. The sweet shanties that evoke the sense of home. The melodies that play as I sail across the waves or engage in epic battles are a reminder of the incredible memories I've created in this game. The music is more than just a background track. It's a piece of the game's soul that I carry with me. It's a call to adventure and a connection to the game's earliest days, when everything was new and exciting. It's a testament to the enduring magic of Sea of Thieves. While my journey in Sea of Thieves was shaped by my personal experiences, it was also heavily influenced by content creators like Beardageddon, Mixelplex, and Boxy Fresh. These creators not only entertained, but also inspired me to become a better pirate. Their content was a huge inspiration for improving my skills in the game. By spending countless hours watching their streams, I learned so much and discovered the world of content creation in this space. Their passion for Sea of Thieves fueled my desire to excel in the game. But it just wasn't about becoming a better player for me. These creators also inspired me to start making my own content on Sea of Thieves, with the ambitious goal of becoming a Sea of Thieves partner. The idea of sharing my adventures and knowledge with the community was a thrilling prospect, and I felt that I had built up a large amount of knowledge that I felt I could share. It's been almost three years of making content on Sea of Thieves, and I have achieved so much. Through highs and lows, one constant has remained the same, the goal to reach Sea of Thieves partner. From my first guide on the channel to my last highlights video, I have grown a community which I'm truly, truly proud of, and has helped me through some of the worst points of my life. I've struggled with mental health a lot, and I've struggled with serious addiction. But that feeling of coming home, sitting at my computer, and making a Sea of Thieves video, that, that's what's helped me through. I think that's part of the reason why I can't let this game go. Not only has the channel and game helped me get through some of the worst points of my life to get to the point where I am now, where I am the happiest I've ever been. Starting my own family with an amazing partner who has been the best thing that's ever happened to me. But I've also had the privilege of actually becoming a Sea of Thieves partner with some of my favorite creators and I've gotten to work with some amazing people and brands. Sea of Thieves has become a part of me and it's forever associated with the amazing memories that are treasure.
As Sea of Thieves continues to evolve and change, I'm reminded of the old days. I'll stick around for all the new content that gets thrown our way, but it's with the hope that the game will expand as it used to, with updates filled with features that we can enjoy for years to come. In conclusion, Sea of Thieves has been a remarkable journey, filled with highs and lows, changes and challenges. It's a game that's captured my heart and continues to hold a special place in the gaming world. As we navigate the uncertain waters of the future, I'll always remember the adventures, the friendships, and the music that made Sea of Thieves an unforgettable part of my gaming life. Thank you for everything.